Hi, hello there, good afternoon. Today is Wednesday, as you know, that means new comic books for you guys out there, as well for me, because I will we'll be popping out later to go and get some new comic books. 15th of August today, and here I am to review issues 7 to 12 of Superboy. Okay, now, um, there isn't really much I can say regarding what I've read so far of Superboy. It has been quite good, but not as amazing as I was hoping it would be, but that doesn't mean to say I'm not going to stop reading it, um, especially so for the fact that later on we're going to get a crossover that involves Superboy, Superman and Supergirl. They're going to go through hell, basically. So what I'm saying on that. Anyway, um, so, we, if you haven't watched, uh, if you want to check out the first six issues that I've reviewed, just click on the link on, on the video anywhere here, um, so you can have a look at that before, before, reading, before watching this one if you want. Um, so anyway, issues 7 to 11, um, between 7 and 10, um, there isn't really much to, uh, to go on. Well, 7, 8 and 9 are pretty much all, all of the similar sort of story, um, a continuation as it were. There was the, uh, you know, in, in issue 7 he, uh, he goes back to, uh, to nowhere and encounters Rose Wilson, who's like one of the ravagers who's actually after him, trying to stop him from making a big mistake that could end up costing his, costing his life. Um, we get to issue 8 where he faces a character by the name of Grunge, um, who seemingly is immune to his TK power, um, and then finds another way of um, stopping him. It's not very pretty. Um, by issue 9, um, this is all part of the culling prelude. As you can see, there's, uh, there's four issues all together. Um, so it wasn't just Superboy, but it was Teen Titans, and I think also... Um, Oh, sugar. Uh, Legion Lost was also part of the uh, the crossover as well, which is why it says here part two of four, as you can see. Um, this one features a character known as Warblade, who is very brutal. Um, is will take them down no matter what. He will kill them if they if he has to. Um, we actually find out what he was really like before he became Warblade. Um, you know, he was he, he's been warped by a character known as Harvest, and Harvest is like the big bad guy who's going around taking these uh, kid superheroes, putting them together as part of his culling to become, you know, a, some sort of cult group that he's putting together so that they could do his bidding, they could be his minions kind of thing. Um, and it's not he, he's not very pretty looking either, I tell you. Um, but where, where it really gets interesting for me is what I really love is Issue 10. Issue 10 was so awesome because it was a relationship between... Superboy and Wonder Girl, and we all know the relationship that they had pre New 52. Um, we remember when in um, like there was there was the crisis, for example, with, that involved with Superboy and you know uh, Superboy Prime even, and both um, Connor and uh, and Superboy Prime were both going up against each other, and eventually, unfortunately for for Connor, he uh, he got killed by. Prime, um, and it sent Cassie into a into a bit of a into, into an emotional state. Um, she she got really depressed, and really down about it. But um, but then obviously in Legion of Three Worlds, which was part of Final Crisis, he he returned. He came back. They managed to bring him back alive. Um, Brainiac spent over a thousand years preparing that to happen. <laughs> it was quite interesting to be honest. But uh, the, I think I love this issue so much because there's 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 parts where um, you know they come, they're on a strange island. They're facing up against a dinosaur. For heaven's sake, <laughs> T-Rex it appears. Um, it's just amazing how you know Wonder Girl is trying to command Superboy to some extent, give him give him authority to, to to some extent. But he's you know he's not he's not wanting to. No, he's not he's not buying it at all. Um, it, they they're both trying to they're both feeding off each other. Um, there's one bit where you know, Wonder Girl is very gets quite quite emotional to the point of where you know she walks off, she storms off um, from from the questions that Connor's asking him, asking her even, and he tries to kiss her, and she doesn't like that. <laughs> she she just doesn't quite get why he you know just because he's uh, yeah <laughs> feeling because she's feeling vulnerable. He thinks oh that's my chance sort of thing, but um, yeah very very wrong move to have made there Connor is all I'm going to say I keep calling him Connor because even though his name isn't actually Connor I that's what I'm familiar with anyway but uh, even though it is actually just Connell but it, it really was great to see this relationship between the two of them um, very very good um, as I say 
conflicts galore between the pair of them and what and I think that's what made the issue really interesting is that it wasn't a case that they got on so well because obviously um, the Teen Titans were brought to um, he was sent to take down the Teen Titans as instructed by Nowhere and um, obviously Wonder Girl is still feeling the uh, the repercussions of that so uh, she she still doesn't trust him as, as much as he doesn't trust her either um, issue 11 he uh He's starting to become a, try, trying to live a normal life, you know, trying to blend in, as it were, with the humans. I mean, in this particular issue, in particular, he he's he's rich, he's rich to the point of where he's actually stolen the money, but he says he's borrowed it. Um, but uh, he, he's got a he's got a very wealthy lifestyle now, and um, and I think that was what the issue was actually trying to say was that you know Superboy wants to now blend in, he wants to now be normal kind of thing. Yes, he's. Uh, He's, he's he was made in a lab, so effectively, you know, he's still not human. You know, we still don't even know who his human DNA donor is. We know who the Kryptonian DNA is from, but no idea where the human one is. And as I said when I did the first uh, six issues reveal, the first issue itself, um, I mentioned that even though that it wasn't said who the human donor was, I still think that it might be Lex. But it may not be Lex. Who could it be? That's just it. It still hasn't been revealed. It's still ongoing. Even a year later, we still don't know who his human <laughs> DNA donor is. So, very, very interesting. Um, issue 12. Um, he's, uh, as I say, he's living a bit of a much more wealthy lifestyle. He's hanging around with some very wealthy people, um, very wealthy individuals. Um, his um, his landlady... <laughs> Is a very hot-looking lady by the name of Dallas Sorrentino, and he's so, he's he's uh, she's so hot that even um, Bunker, his uh, his like housemate, is is like, what the hell, dude? How lucky are you, kind of thing. Um, so it's very uh, amazing that he he gets he he knows someone like that, um, but he uh, there's, there's a bit more to Dallas than 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 than, than is perceived in this issue. Um, she's being chased down by some woman called Kiva as well, who is um, who's after something. Um, it's not really about. Uh, well, yeah, she's saying she's saying you know it looks like Dallas owes Kiva money by the looks of things or something else entirely, and then Superboy intervenes. But when he intervenes, well, Kiva gives him, you know, sends him to another world, so to speak. She pretty much manipulates his mind to think that where he actually is isn't where he really is. So. He's got he's got some sort of illusion going on around his head. Um, he eventually breaks it up and realizes how to do it because um, she's feeding off his energy, and then he pretty much just loses all, all sense. Um, but she sees something in his mind that he's he doesn't even know he was even in there. Uh, but whatever it was, well, it pretty much made her quite catatonic. Yeah, she's gone. She's gone. She went catatonic. So whatever she saw in Superboy's mind. It really scared the shit out of her. That's all I'm going to say. Um, so yeah, that's uh, very interesting. And also, I just quickly got to say, even though it's the end here, this particular character, I'm very intrigued about Jocelyn Lure, whoever she is. She obviously knows a lot about Superboy. Um, so future issues could show that she may play a major part in his life so far. So we'll see how that goes. But um, there you have it. That's all the seven, the, the twelve issues done. Um, we'll see how it goes uh, when issue 13 comes out in October as, as you know as I keep saying next month um, they're going to be releasing their issue zeros for all the characters that they've released so far in the new 52 um, so we'll see how it goes um, from there anyway um, yeah bro I'm off to the comic book shop and I shall see you all later bye <laughs>